last psych topics we're going to cover are the sexual dysfunction and paraphilic disorders. So we'll start with the sexual dysfunction. And the first one is female sexual interest slash arousal disorder. So this is defined by a persistent, deficient sexual or erotic thoughts, fantasies, and desire for sexual activities occurring in only women. So common comorbids include depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, stress, relationship problems, hormone imbalances, drugs, and menopause. These patients have little or no interest in sex and do not respond subjectively or physically to sexual stimulation. So the DSM-5 criteria for this condition include a significant decrease in greater than or equal to three of the following. Interest in sexual activity, sexual or erotic fantasies or thoughts, initiation of sexual activity and responsiveness to a partner's initiation, excitement or pleasure during more than 75% sexual activity, interest or arousal in response to sexual internal or external erotic stimuli, genital or non-genital sensations during greater or equal to 75% of sexual activity. These patients will experience greater than or equal to three of these symptoms, and these will cause significant distress and must last at least six months in order for this to be diagnosed. Physical exam might be normal. Again, you want to work up these patients and check their hormone levels and check for, you know, an underlying condition that might be contributing because physical exam might appear to be normal. For treatment, you want to educate about sexual anatomy and how to be aroused as a female, psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy, as well as hormonal therapy such as topical estrogen for GUS syndrome of menopause or bromocryptine for hyperprolactinemia. A couple medications that a patient might be on that contribute to this condition include SSRIs, anti-seizure medications, or beta blockers. So similarly, we have male hypoactive sexual desire disorder. And this is the persistent or recurrently deficient sexual or erotic thoughts, fantasies, and desire for sexual activity in males. Again, this can be due to the same kind of causes, hormonal imbalance, other mental health issues, relationship problems, and can also be seen in diabetes. Again, same to some five criteria. Basically, the only difference between female sexual interest arousal disorder and male hypoactive sexual desire disorder is... One occurs in females, one occurs in males. Symptoms must be occurring for a minimum of six months to make the diagnosis. Treatment for this include couples and individual counseling, and you want to treat the cause. So if a patient has low testosterone, treat with testosterone replacement therapy. Other things that might come up are thyroid issues, depression, anxiety, and elevated prolactin. So You really want to dig and find the root cause for these symptoms and treat the cause. So the last section of disorders that we're going to talk about are paraphilic disorders. So basically the theme of all of these disorders is that they all involve a certain urge or fantasy and that might be normal. However, the diagnosis of the disorder comes from the fact that the urge or the fantasy causes significant distress or impairment in their daily life and this lasts for more than six months. So I won't read the specific DSM-5 criteria for all of these, just know I'll tell you what the urge or the fantasy is in each of these disorders and know that failure to complete or act on the urge causes significant distress or impairment and it has to last for at least six months. So the first one that we'll talk about is exhibitionist disorder. The urge or fantasy in this condition is basically the achievement of sexual excitement through genital exposure, usually to an unsuspecting stranger. So they have the urge to show their genitals to anybody. The risk factors here occurs in males more than females, and this is commonly seen in sex offenders. Physical exam might be normal. The treatment includes psychotherapy, support groups, and SSRIs. The next one is fetishistic disorder. The urge or fantasy here is the use of an inanimate object or from a very specific focus on a non-genital body part, such as the feet, for example. So basically their sexual fantasy is about an inanimate object or a random body part. This occurs almost exclusively in males and fetishes often begin in puberty. Here are a couple examples of common fetishes that people might have. 
aprons, shoes, leather, latex items, and women's undergarments. Treatment includes psychotherapy support groups and SSRIs. The next one is pedophilic disorder, and the urge or fantasy here is prepubescent or young adolescents, typically aged less than 13 years old. These patients may or may not act on it, but either way, it causes clinically significant distress in these people. So this occurs in males more than females. Common comorbids include antisocial personality disorder, substance use disorder, depression, ADHD, anxiety, and PTSD, and is seen typically in patients with a history of family dysfunction, sexual abuse, or marital conflict. Basically, this is when you see a pedophile, an adult attracted to a child. Treatment for this includes psychotherapy and one medication treatment for this includes IM intramuscular antiandrogen, which would be like medroxyprogesterone acetate, and this basically blocks the production of LH and FSH to reduce testosterone and decrease libido. So these urges might not be as strong because you're giving them an antiandrogen to reduce their libido. The next one is sexual masochism disorder. This one is achievement of sexual arousal by intentional participation in an activity that involves being humiliated, beaten, bound, or otherwise abused. You want to decipher this from just an abusive relationship, and these patients get enjoyment out of doing some interesting sexual behaviors. We'll We'll leave it at that. This occurs more in males than females. Some examples that would give this type of patient sexual excitement would be like binding themselves, piercing their skin, applying electrical shocks, or burning themselves. Treatment for this includes psychotherapy but is often ineffective. These patients don't usually change their habits. And the last one is voyeuristic disorder, and this is achievement of sexual arousal by observing others who are naked, disrobing, or engaging in sexual activity. This one you want to just keep in mind the criteria for diagnosis because people viewing pornography is very common and that does not classify somebody as having voyeuristic disorder. This disorder occurs when their urge or fantasy leads to clinically significant impairment if they're unable to satisfy that urge. This typically begins in adolescence or early adulthood and cannot be diagnosed until the patient is over 18 years old. So basically, this patient desires to watch others in sexual situations and spending a lot of time seeking out opportunities to do so. So basically, they'll watch pornography excessively, and this is only considered voyeurism if it's being done secretly or in private. Or basically, the people that are engaging in sexual activity are unaware that the the person with voyeuristic disorder is watching. Treatment for this includes psychotherapy, support groups, SSRIs, and possibly anti-androgen drugs, just like what we saw in the pedophilic disorder. 